Welcome to The Economy Magazine. I'm Benjamin Chong Alfares, and as we celebrate 67 years since Israel's independence today, we take you on a journey through the country's economic history. There's much to say about the startup nation, but where did it all start? With us in the studio to give us a better understanding of what makes up Israel's present-day economy is Jewish history professor Danny Goodwine from the University of Haifa. Professor Goodwine, thanks for joining us. Welcome. So, I mean, looking essentially at the history of Israel, 1948, uh, you know, it, it didn't really specifically start there, right? We had Jewish pioneers coming in in the late 19th century, establishing essentially the kibbutz system, which is the, uh, the, the beginnings of the Israeli economy. What was here at, on the eve of the independence of Israel? Well, what was the eve was that Palestine, mandatory Palestine, that was under the mandate of Britain, was a dual economy with Jewish economy and Arab economy that was in some way integrated and in some ways not. Uh, the idea of the partition plant of the UN was to establish two states in mandatory Palestine but united economically. Mm -hmm. Now the war of independence, the war of uh, 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 48, uh, broke down this uh, dual economy of mandatory Palestine and established the economy of Israel which was independent of the history of uh, the, the, of the uh, relations with the Arab uh, economy of uh, mandatory Palestine, and then we begin now the Jewish economy in yes. Israel had its history because it's begun with the settlements of uh, in the late 19th century and uh, mainly in the 30s and 2030s it was built to be a solid economy that was hurt during the war so when we began the history of the state of israel after the war we have a shattered economy well we have a basis but a basis that was disconnected from the arab economy and was uh, severely hurt at the war so the beginning were not very promising making allowance for the fact that in that time um, Many uh, new, car, uh, new immigrants came to Israel, mainly from uh, Holocaust survivors and uh, refugees from the Arab, uh, from many from Going Iraq. now also towards the uh, 50s, the early, late no, no, 40s, no, the early 50s? No, no, it began, it began already in the, uh, the, late in, 40s. the, in, the in the late 40s. Right. Uh, mainly Jews came from Iraq and Yemen, and the old communities there, uh, they fled. And so uh, during the war and near after the war, there was this shattered economy with a growing wave of uh, new immigrants coming to Israel. That was the beginning. Okay, specifically, we're talking about the, f the Second World War, of course. We're not talking about the War of Independence. No, no, we are speaking about refugees. Who we're speaking about the War of Independence. In the War of Independence, during the War of Independence, and near after the war, yes. came those immigrants from the Holocaust, from Europe, and from the Arab lands. Okay. So in terms of the economy that existed at the time, though, I mean, was it essentially a kibbutz-based economy? What no, no, was it, there? It wasn't a kibbutz-based economy. It was an agrarian economy with a basis of uh, some uh, industrial infrastructure, but very, very, uh, 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 <clears throat> in its very beginnings. And uh, when we are speaking about the beginning of the 50s, the, begin the economy of Israel is completely nothing. It's just built itself. And what we have, we have during the 50s right. is a very fast economic growth. We are speaking about something like 10% a year or something like it during all these decades. Yes. Now, this growth is mainly built about the ongoing process of, of new immigrants who come to Israel and all the building of... Um, uh, 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 of uh, schools, uh, uh, of uh, housing, and right. uh, all this, uh, all this absorption of the uh, of the newcomers, of the immigrants to Israel, uh, gave a great bust to bust to the economy. And so we have 10 percent a year, and the economy is growing. And so in the beginning of the 60s, we have an economy that is growing. Right. I'm just going to interrupt you here. I mean, essentially, it was a socialist-based society, right? Uh, it, no, yeah, it was uh, the the government. Was well, the the government the government that governed Israel was basically of uh, uh, of idea of welfare state more right. than a socialist it right. wasn't a socialist economy it was a welfare state economy with a very great public sector right. that dominated banking dominated infrastructure and so on uh, the uh, history which is a um, 
the union, uh, the, the trade union, the, the, uh, the trade union of Israel had a very massive right. role in the economy, and so it was a basically a welfare state economy with large public sector. Right. Well, Professor Goodwin, I also want to take this opportunity to introduce, of course, Daniel Roth, i 24 News journalist. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Specifically, um, you have an involvement, of course, with the kibbutz movement to some extent, um, and you are familiar also with the, the, the socialist background of uh, Israeli society. What do you have to add to what Professor Goodwin just told yeah, us? Yeah, I mean, I, th <clears throat> I think there's uh, a number of trends happening that are interesting and unique to Israel. One of them is, uh, you know, it sounds astounding uh, to a lot of people in modern Western societies that uh, that hear about the weight that immigration puts on economies, to hear that in the 1950s, when 10 percent growth every year uh, based on immigration. Uh, and I think that this brings in something, you know, and you mentioned that uh, my connection to the kibbutz movement, there is a there is a social, not socialist, but social aspect to that growth, and that is uh, the question of how you identify, how the, the, the absorbing country identifies with new immigrants, uh, and whether they take them in socially, uh, oftentimes can answer how the economy comes into play. Right. Now, we just heard from Professor Gutwan, of course, how um, this influx of of refugees, essentially, a lot of them, um, really did boost the, the local economy to a large extent, but it also had a very big weight on the economy, didn't it? Because the, the, the state essentially had to take care of all these people. I mean, we're in the 50s, a time of austerity, of no, poverty? Well, well the, beginning of, the beginning of the uh, 50s, is the, it's a time of austerity. Now we have the immigrants' paradox. You know, per, uh, immigrants are weight in the economy, but they're only also contributing to the economy. So right. when you're speaking about immigrants, there's a du to, a dual, uh, th this is a dual impact. Now, Israel was an austerity. Uh, there was a period of austerity in the beginning of the uh, 50s. This. It was. Uh, it was in the when we are going to the late fifties. Now we have the. Um and, you know, all the uh, Germany has uh, gave as well as all the contributions for uh, uh, after the um, Second World War and the Holocaust. So basically, and the uh, United States gave as well so a, a, a massive loans and okay. uh, started, uh, step by step. I think that the Israeli economy was built on uh, to be uh, from a very uh, I would say agrarian economy to more uh, right. uh, industrial oriented economy. I want to take a jump here now, um, taking from the 40s to the 50s, take us all the way into the 60s and the 70s, when we essentially see a political shift eventually happening, um, essentially social inequality uh, rearing its ugly head, so to speak, the Black Panthers coming to rise, and of course the, the, the political shifts from left to right as Israel moves, as you mentioned yourself, from being more of an agrarian welfare type state to being more of an industrial state. No, I, I think that we have to uh, differentiate here between three stages. You know, okay. there is the, the, the one stage, the first stage of Israeli economy is up to 67, 68. Well, there is a, the influx of immigrants and growing inequality. Well, this was the time of inequality because when immigrants coming in, the inequality is growing because they have nothing with them. So it was up to 65. In 65, we have a very, up to 67, we have a very um, hard period of recession. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Israeli economy is in two years after massive recession. And the recession is uh, is threatening to explode society. And after 60, after this recession, there is a great shift in Israel economy. And from 68 to 77, we have in Israel the great uh, one decade that inequality was narrowing, was lowering. Yeah. And uh, the government uh, after. It's right that from the very beginning the idea of welfare state was here, but in this decade from uh, 68 to 77, there was Israel was built like a northwestern uh, welfare state with very um, uh, with great um, uh, well, uh, well education, housing uh, was improving very much. Government in, spending essentially yeah, on, the, on on. But in this this very time. All the inequalities. Now, when you want to uh, to uh, lower inequality, people who are on the lower side feel it very, very hard. And that was the time on the Black Panthers. That is to say, uh, lower class, lower class Jews from Oriental origin, mainly in Jerusalem, also in the Tel Aviv area, 
uh, were uh, ra uh, uh, make their demands for more equality. Is this, was br is this what brought us to 1977, when we essentially saw the political shift towards uh, in, right? In way, no, not only. I would say that the political shift in 77 from a socialist-oriented uh, economy to a capitalist uh, neoliberal economy, I think that this shift was uh, uh, the output uh, or the outcome of two uh, major trends. One was those uh, those lower classes of food that they were they needed weren't met and uh, they demanded it and they voted from the right in order to get better than before. But there was another segment yes. who contributed to this shift, and this was the Israeli affluent middle class, who wasn't really wasn't ready for this uh, more egalitarian economy. That we see, that we saw in this uh, decade of 67, uh, 68 yeah. to seventy seven. They wanted to keep what they had. Yeah, they wanted to keep what they had, and I would say that the meeting that the uh, turnabout of seventy seven was the meeting place of those lower classes mm -hmm. who were um, uh, who were demanding to change the situation with this affluent uh, uh, middle uh, middle classes who didn't want to give what they had. Mm -hmm. And that was made the turnabout of 77, and Israel came to be a capitalist neoliberal economy, um, preaching privatizing that, you know. It is part, though, of a, a sort of a global trend that we saw. I mean, it wasn't just in Israel. We saw it in different places around the world, right? Well, that's right. The, the, the neoliberal turn, uh, turn in Israel wasn't, uh, well, wasn't an Israeli, but it, was, it has its Israeli specifics. Mm -hmm. Well, when we're speaking about the neoliberalism in Israel, we speak about it's part of a global... Um, of a global trend, and you know, Thatcher, Mid Reagan, yeah, Rudy, and, you know, Milton Friedman, Milton Friedman came. Well, he wasn't responsible for that, uh, for that uh, turnabout. But he mm -hmm. came to Israel in '77, in the summer of '77. He was very glad to see what is happening here. Yes. Now, but then we have sp uh, some specific of the Israeli um, neoliberalism. One is growing a massive growing of inequality. Uh, because when you privatize the, uh, um, the, 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 the social services and you turn the social, social services into, uh, into commodities, mm -hmm. it's very clear that the lower classes can't buy these commodities. Right. But these same lower classes were the supporters of the right-wing coalition that governed Israel. And that right-wing coalition has to find a way how to square the circle between the neoliberal policy and their... The, the their will to, the, yeah, the will to keep their consistency. So, looking at this period, though, in the seventies, I mean, how did this set up the Israeli economy for the eighties? The eighties saw a period of, of great recession. Yeah, I, I would say that in Israel we had uh, well, uh, we had great inflation first of all. Well, the the no from seventy seven to uh, eighty five, Israel is undergoing a massive inflation that um, it reached up to a thousand percent from that mistake. Uh, I, I would say that uh, in its height it was four for four, four hundred forty four percent. But 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 it was uh, you know you you couldn't manage in that time and right. in, and uh, in uh, eighty and and eighty five, we have this uh, plan of economic plan who put an end to inflation and mm. began, well, the new neoliberal Israeli economy with massive privatization that, and uh, here you can see the division, the economic division of Israeli society, those who haven't are trying to get through the political power uh, um, some social services, so they are sectorizing themselves. They're becoming political sectors. Right. They are forming political parties that are fighting for getting not welfare state, but in a way, in a, in a, in a state that is privatized to get some services for their constituency. And in that in that sense, you have very Israeli, this is unique Israel thing, that you have social, so-called social parties who are supporting privatization, yeah. but within the framework of, of privatization, they try to keep their constituency in a better uh, place. Would you say it's fair um, to, to note that uh, the, the forces that were in power essentially at the very beginning in 1948 and before then essentially kept much of the, the resources and the money all the way through? Or do you see, I mean, to some extent we see a lot of innovation coming from the IDF and from the way in which uh, uh, technologies are, are, are brought into the civil society. I mean, we, presumably IDF is, is a place where, where, it, uh, where it kind of is more distributed more equally. 
where does that inequality actually stem from? Well, the, the, the inequality stem from policy. You know, uh, in Israel we have uh, from 77 on a policy that want uh, to, re, uh, to redistribute. And, and uh, this redistribution okay. is forming new classes and new powers. So w w in Israel today, take the kibbutz movement. Almost nothing is left from the kibbutz movement. Right. Take our, another, uh, the trade union council, which is of immense economic power, nothing left to it. So in Israel, you can see really an economic revolution that was taking, okay. power, taking place in the last three Professor decades. Professor Kuzwein, we have to stop here. Thank you so very much for joining us, coming all the way from Haifa University. And of course, Daniel Roth, thanks for being in the studio with us as well. Thanks. That is the end of our independent special, and that is the end of our economy show. Thank you very much for watching us, and join us again tomorrow for more in the economy.